Buller and welcome to The Lens at 177. On this show we are speaking to the leader of the Fiji Labour Party and also a former Prime Minister of Fiji, uh, Mr. Mahendra Chaudhry. Uh, Mr. Chaudhry has uh, been uh, one of the pioneers, many would say, of the trade union movement way back. Uh, he's been very involved in the lives of cane farmers and the cane um, and sugar industry. Uh, he's also uh, a grassroots man. He's been in touch with the grassroots people from when he began his political career. So uh, we thought to invite uh, you on the show, Mr. Chaudhry, and welcome. Thank you very much for having me, Felix. Yes, thank you. Uh, just to discuss how things have been moving uh, in the political arena, in the sugar industry, uh, over the past couple of months since the coalition government has taken over. And um, one issue that uh, we have noted is you have been quite critical of the, of the coalition's uh, government minister's recent uh, uh, travels and, you know, journeys and so on so overseas. So, you know, uh, I thought just to put it to you that uh, you had said the government machinery appeared to be breaking down. And uh, Prime Minister Sitiveni Rambuka responded by saying that you have no voice and uh, that you're also a spent force. So uh, I think maybe your comments might have, you know, hit a raw nerve. And uh, I just wanted to get your views on the pr what the Prime Minister said and also on the ministerial travel as well. I think it's a uh, complaint which many have been voicing. Uh, it's just not me. Right. People have been speaking out that uh, the ministers are traveling too much yes. when they need to be here looking after the people. Right. They made a lot of promises during election time and now when they are looking for these ministers, mostly they find that they are absent, they are away overseas. Right. Uh, and uh, the incident that you speak of where P Prime Minister reacted uh, was a case where uh, he and uh, three of his deputy prime ministers were right. all away at the same time out of the country. Yes. Now that should never have happened. Right. And uh, when I spoke out that uh, the government machinery seems to be breaking down <laughs> because <laughs> I don't think they knew that who was going to be in, who was going to be out and suddenly <laughs> they found out yes. that well uh, all four of them will be out so they had to find somebody to act as prime minister. Right. And uh, it, it, it's a said that uh, when they're cornered, they resort to uh, personal attacks like that. Yes. Uh, and that shouldn't happen. And this is also a common failing with Finance Minister Biman Prasad. Yes. When he hasn't got answers to the questions, uh, he tends to uh, indulge in personal abuse and, uh, right. and uh, vilification of those who criticize him. Right. Uh, I, I think it's uh, common knowledge that uh, you and uh, Mr. Professor Prasad uh, have, you know, differing views, you might say, on uh, certain issues. Um, you've uh, always, uh, have you always tried to open the door to having dialogue with him? Well, I was expecting that he would consult more. Right. But unfortunately, he didn't. Yes. Once he got elected and he took office, uh, no, we yeah. uh, we don't. I don't think we we met. Yes, you know officially, uh, which is unfortunate. Uh, my main concern was that the promises they had made to the people, and mind you, we fought these elections together. Right. This and the sole purpose of this was this uh, alliance at that time. Yes. Uh, I know with all the opposition political parties was to get uh, the Fiji first government out because right. people had just had enough uh, of their 14 years of you know, yes. misrule. Yes. And then in the course of that, we cooperated and uh, we had a common purpose of uh, bringing about a change. Right. And uh, people also expected that. People expected that, all right, uh, let's have a change and uh, get our freedoms back. Yes. And uh, like, let, uh, you know, let us be free again. Okay, let's get rid of this oppression and all that. Right. And they promised that they will uh, increase the wages, 
because the people had been suffering, there were no pay increases for, for several years, right. cost of living was going up, mm -hmm. uh, health services were very poor, Yes. Uh, infrastructure was terrible, uh, particularly rural infrastructure, right. the sugar industry was going down the tube, so there were so many things and, right. and these promises were made. And uh, then uh, once the elections took place, of course there, was a, there were these negotiations. Right. between uh, those parties which uh, managed to get the threshold and were in parliament. Right. And then they did a deal between themselves. And that's another story, but uh, right. <laughs> but the fact is my concern was, well, look, what are you doing about the promises you made to the people? Yes. As soon as Mr. Prasad uh, assumed office, uh, his first statement was that tax increases are inevitable. Right. And I was furious. Yes. People were not expecting that yes. from him that the first statement you make is you become finance minister that tax, <laughs> <laughs> tax increases are inevitable. Right. Nonetheless, uh, then we came the fiscal review committee and, uh, and uh, all this uh, and eventually uh, they slammed 15 percent value added tax on, right. on the people while giving you know concessions to the, um, to the rich people yeah. by reducing the uh, personal tax rate right. uh, for the rich by uh, not taxing dividends, yes. uh, which should be done, and uh, by uh, removing the uh, social responsibility tax. Right. Then there was this huge concession to Fiji water, yes. seven year tax free holiday. Right. You were quite crit crit critical. I still am. Yes. And I, and I yes. think there should be an inquiry into that. Right. And then you punish, you're punishing the poor here by increasing VAT from 9 to 15 percent. Right. Now that, of course, resulted in you know a huge increase in the cost of living. Yes. Inflation shot up. Right. And uh, people are really crying out. Mm -hmm. they, just, they just couldn't handle it. Yes. Because wages were not rising. You know, and then suddenly when you get a shock like that, how do you accommodate? Right. Uh, well, unless uh, your incomes rise, it's very, 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 very difficult. Yes. About sixty to seventy percent of our people are on poor wages in this country. That, that's a fact. No one can deny. Yes. So um, this is where I think uh, you know my concerns came from right. because I came into politics uh, from trade union movement. Yes. And we all know that it has been very difficult. Uh, particularly since Fiji first came in, they were suppressing wages. Yes. Right. Trade union rights were taken away, people couldn't bargain. Mm -hmm. And for those 14 years or so, people were suffering. Yes. They were not getting pay increases that they should have got right. as a result of cost of living going up. You know. mm -hmm. And here is a government which made a lot of promises. Right. And not acting on it. Mm -hmm. and, and further punishing the people by right. imposing uh, that at 15%. Now, when this was uh, subject to debate before the budget was finalized, Prime Minister Mbuka was asked the question about this 15 percent right. or so. He himself said that 15 percent was rather high. Yes, yeah. that's right. Yeah. But then he let it happen. Mm -hmm. And then the, the shocker was when they took $10,000 $10, increase for themselves as MPs. Right. Uh, you were uh, quite critical of that as yes, well. I yes. Mean, how do you how do you justify that? How do you explain that to the people? Mm. It's nothing but greed. Right. Nothing but greed. This money used to go to political parties before. Right. And it was fifteen thousand right. per member. Yes. That's what political parties used to get to run their offices and all that. That's right, yes. Now what they did was to uh, convert 10,000 of that to their personal salaries, only 5,000 going to the party. Right. But they've taken care of the party funds by approving or getting the Parliament uh, Secretary General to approve mm -hmm. $325,000 each party right. per year. So, so that was taken that care was of. That was already taken yeah, care of right. by them. So they decided that they'd take this 10,000 for themselves. Right. Now, this is nothing but, you know, Greed. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, 
when you question these things, they mm. get very angry. Right. And they start abusing you. And get personal. And get personal, yes. Yeah. So, uh, no, you can't have people in government who behave this way, right. who are not honest. Yeah, not um, honest with uh, their uh, but people. You know, Mr. Chaudhary, people might say, then what's the alternative? You know, do we go back to uh, the previous administration? When, no. What is the, how do we get through this? No, we have our rights and our freedoms enshrined in the Constitution. Of course, these were taken away arbitrarily, right? So um, that's another story. But in terms of uh, uh, in terms of uh, attending to the needs of the poor, yes, you you can do it, right? Yeah. Uh, in the public service, they've been promising pay increases. Yes. During the election time, they promised teachers pay increases, nurses pay increases, and other civil servants. They haven't had a pay increase since 2017. Right. Mm -hmm. So, pay them. Right. If you have to borrow, borrow. Right. Pay them. Yeah, but can we afford it though? Yes. You know, that's, that's the question. That, that, that is the thing. Yes. What we can afford or what we cannot afford is, is the question. Right. And I think we certainly, we cannot afford giving them $10,000 more. <laughs> that should have happened. <laughs> They're yes. already on super salaries. Yes. L listen, when you look at them, how they behave, every one of them is either a minister or assistant minister. Yes. So they're all on six-figure salaries. Right. Very high salary. They have a vehicle. They have housing allowance and other perks and all that sort of thing. When you add it up, it comes to a pretty hefty sum. Right. They weren't satisfied. They wanted 10,000 more. Right. How do you justify that? So th there is a way of handling this, how to manage government expenditure. Yes. And it can be done. It can be done. Pay increases must be allowed. You cannot uh, punish the workers. If cost of living is going up, right. then the workers must be compensated. Yes. Right. They must be compensated and the government has to find a way to do it. Right. The, the I'm talking about civil servants, the private yeah. sector, that they'll take care, that they'll take care of themselves. Mm. There should be bargaining. Right collective bargaining and let the people do that and, uh, and, and through their unions or whatever machinery there is, uh, seek uh, improvements to their terms and conditions of employment, right. including pay. Yes. But this hasn't been allowed and this uh, is the same thing now. We find that they're making promises but uh, they're not providing anything in the budget for that. Right. Would, would uh, you know, a Labour government have done things differently? Certainly. Yes. Oh, certainly. We, uh, in our manifesto, uh, we, uh, we've covered a lot of these things across the economy, how, would ha how we'd handle right. uh, rec uh, the economic recovery. Right. And we also had uh, proposed an alternative budget, right. yeah, which we would have put in place of the uh, Fiji First budget right. had, had we come in, mm -hmm. into government. So we had prepared for it to the last detail, yes. you'll probably know that uh, some of these uh, parties didn't have a manifesto. Yes. They're afraid to put one out because they might be penalized under the Electoral Act uh, amendments which Kayyum put through in the last moments. Right. So they didn't put a <laughs> manifesto out, they yes. were, didn't want to make promises. But nonetheless, uh, going back, uh, these are the grievances that, uh, that people now have. That They've made a lot of promises, cane farmers, mm -hmm. right. and uh, also in terms of uh, uh, increase in the basic, uh, uh, sorry, minimum wage. Yes. That hasn't happened. Right. And uh, minimum cane price. Mm -hmm. and now uh, Pr Professor Prasad is saying that they've got the highest pay, cane pay. Uh, Ninety-one dollars. Yes, yeah. that's not quite true. That's not quite true. Because he's adding to that five per, uh, top up government top up. Yes, five dollars a ton. Yes, and the monies which were wrongly deducted from uh, the proceeds mm -hmm. of uh, the farmers by the Fiji First government right. in two years, which, which also comes to around about five or six dollars. Yes. So when you take this out, 
it, it comes down to um, eighty-one dollars, which is not even eighty-five dollars. Right, the guaranteed guaranteed price. price. Right. So this is confusing the people and making fools out of them. Right. It's not. It's not true. Yeah. But uh, these these were promises made, and, and they are not being kept. Minimum wage promise is not being kept. Pay increase promise is not being kept. Right. And uh, they've got no control about the inflation. Yes. If it's going up. They should find a way how to how to stop prices. I think what we need to do is to have a, a more effective price uh, surveillance uh, system. Right. Because prices, they're controlling prices only for very few items. Yes. But basically everything is going up and people now uh, find it very difficult, uh, particularly uh, people with large families. Right. But uh, are some of, those, some of those out of our control though? Uh, you know, from uh, shipping costs, uh, overseas manufacturing costs? Yes. The, 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 these costs have gone up, uh, no, no doubt about it. Right. But uh, what I'm saying is that uh, are, are these correctly reflected in the prices? Right. Or are people being overcharged as, uh, using this as an excuse? Right. So we should have a better pr price surveillance machinery right. to, uh, uh, to watch over these things. Right. Uh, but uh, basically, when you come to think of it, uh, and this has been proven, that workers have always had to catch up on cost of living. They're always behind. Right. right. And in the last 14 years or so of Fiji First, well, they have fall, they've fallen uh, very badly behind right. in terms of uh, real wages. Mm -hmm. So real wages today, in fact, are lower than what they were 20 or 25 years ago. Right. When, we, when you index it with inflation and all that. Yes. Yes. And so we'll stay poor, right? Right. Poverty is increasing. Is there is there any uh, doubt why we are poor? Right. Because we are suppressing pay. People right. are, you know, uh, unable to meet uh, the bas their basic needs. Yes. So we'll we stay a poor country. Right. Eighty percent of the people will be either poor or on the on verge of poverty. Right. If, we, if we carry on in this path, if we deny the workers and the people their their rightful share of the economy right. and this is what's happening because income disparities are widening right. and and this is a very dangerous thing right. so um, okay something should be done on that right. well we will come back and discuss that uh, after a short break we were around when the deed was first signed we were around when the first car engine roared we were around when the very first was crowned through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. We're having a discussion with the Fiji Labour Party leader and former Prime Minister Mahendra Chaudhary on uh, just how things are progressing in the country since the coalition government has taken over and Mr. Chaudhry was uh, just uh, discussing the minimum wage issue and also you mentioned that, um, you know, the trade union movement that when you were in the movement was a lot stronger. Uh, you know, what, what happened since then? Well, I think um, uh, particularly since the Fiji first came in, after 2009 when the constitution was uh, abrogated. Right and we had military-backed government uh, in, in place. A lot of the freedoms and rights of the unions were taken away, the workers were taken away. Right. And they, um, you know, uh, so there was a lot of oppression then. And uh, very draconian legislation was passed with right. heavy prison terms, prison sentences and fines uh, if you broke those. Uh, so uh, it was to subdue the trade union movement. That was the strategy of the Fiji First government. Right. To, uh, to destroy or, or, or weaken democratic institutions. Right. And they targeted the uh, unions first. Yes. So um, right. that was uh, their strategy. Right. And uh, they brought about legislation and, uh, you know, through intimidation and, uh, and uh, uh, 
draconian legislation, they were able to suppress the trade union movement. Right. Um, we had the same sort of thing uh, going back to 1990, 91 after the 87 coup. Yes. We, we had more or less the same thing, but the trade union congress was much stronger than those days. We defied some of those legislation. Right. Yeah, we stood up to those uh, uh, legislations and the government at the time. Uh, and I think this, it didn't happen this time so much. Uh, the, the, the movement gave in, and mm -hmm. uh, then of course government took advantage of that. And uh, the uh, end uh, result was that the workers suffered. Yes, yes. And I just want to take you to you know the coup of uh, 2000, when uh, you were removed uh, as a democratically elected government. Um, by gunpoint and held hostage and uh, you know when the military finally got control of the situation you were not put back into government no um, you know were you disappointed well we were denied our right yes because we were elected for a term right uh, of five years and then that coup, coup took place the matter went to court, right. uh, and uh, the court uh, decided that uh, the coup uh, uh, had failed, and uh, the government must be returned. Right. But uh, at the time, those in control uh, of the country decided not to do so, and uh, appointed an interim government, and then and had elections a couple of a year later. Yes. You, you mean you're referring to Mr. Bani Marama, who was yes, in control was in at control the time. Then, yes. yes. As commander, yeah. Right. Mm. So, uh, you know, did you object to that or, you know? Well, we were hardly in a position to do anything because right. the military was controlling the country virtually. Right. They had they, they taken over yes. and appointed an interim government. Right. So, um, uh, we, uh, at the time, I had written to the president right. that we'd be prepared to. Uh, go for a fresh election if, if, if that was felt uh, the best thing to do. Right. But then we should be reinstated. Yes. And then we can we can call an election. Right. Right. Well, in, in the you know before the actual coup happened, uh, was there any inkling that something was going to happen, or you know? There were uh, rumors and reports, but we were. Uh, keeping a watch over the uh, situation. We were having briefings from the security forces and we were assured that everything was under control. Right. Yes. Right. But obviously that was not so because some of them were mixed up in the uh, yes. whole thing themselves, as you know. Right. So, uh, yes, right. Uh, we were let down by the very people who were supposed to protect us. Yes. In, in, uh, in hindsight, in hindsight, you know, we in 2023 now, would you have done things a bit differently back then? I don't think we did anything wrong. Right. It was simply a racial issue. Right. Right. People don't want to admit that, but I'm, I'm saying that that's what it was. Right. Because our government performed very well. Yes. In 12 months, we posted the 9.6 economic growth. Yes. We brought down the cost of living. Right. We were the party which removed VAT on essentials. Right. Rambuka had brought VAT in in 1992. Right. And our, our campaign in uh, 99 elections was that we'd remove uh, VAT from uh, uh, basic food items and things and uh, to make it uh, cheaper for the ordinary people. Right. And uh, so we brought down the cost of living uh, and uh, we. Uh, governed well, we, uh, and, and that's what, uh, mm. Mm. excuse me, could I put it down? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. uh, sorry, um, yes, so we, we hadn't done anything wrong, right. but of course they were agitators. Yes. Right. There was, there was vested interests who were not uh, happy with the, with the change of government. Right. 
these were forces who wanted, you know, power for themselves. And of course, uh, they managed to um, do that with right. the help of the military. Yeah, military was involved. Right. It was not George Speight coup. Right. George Speight was a frontman. Frontman. Right. Yeah. And uh, there were these people behind it. Right. Because arms came into the parliament. Yes. You, you you were there and you saw. Yes, this they came in yeah. and, and they brought it in and. Uh, and so it came in from the FMF, RFMF, and uh, there were RFMF personnel who were there. They were being paid while they were there. Right. This, of course, all this came out later in the in the inquiry. Right. The inquiry that all these people were paid right. while they were uh, uh, with the rebels in, in Parliament, holding as host hostage. Right. So, um, yes, very right. sad for the for the country. Right. Uh, 87 was the same thing. Right. Right. It was military coup mm -hmm. led by Rambuka. And uh, look where we are today. Yes. 209 is by Nimarama. Right. So we are so far behind today. Well, right. we, we should have been well ahead. Yes. We wouldn't have been this poor. We wouldn't have been begging or borrowing so right. much. Right. You know. But uh, this, this is the consequence of uh, of the coups, and uh, I don't know when actually we are going to get rid of this phenomenon. It's still there. It's still there. <laughs> yeah. at, 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 I just wanted to ask, like, at any point uh, during your captivity, did you think you might not make it through? Like, you might not. Uh well, there was a time when uh, you know the there was. Um, Crossfire between the the rebels in Parliament who were holding as hostage and the army. Right. Mm. Right. So uh, that was the time that uh, the risk was there. Yes. Mm. Yeah. At, at any point, did you think you know uh, why put up with all this? I, I mean, after you were set free. And just pack up and move to another country where you could probably <laughs> live, live, live out your years. <laughs> Why should I have moved to another country? This is my country. <laughs> I was born here. My children were born here. Right. And my dad was born here. My granddad came from India, but my dad was born here. Right. Uh, so no, I don't surrender. Right. Uh, I was taught yeah. not to surrender to injustice. Right. So that's why I'm so passionate about it. Right. If I see a thing going wrong, I speak out. Yes. There are very few politicians who do that. Yes. Particularly when. Yeah. And you you can see that happening now <laughs> with <laughs> yes. with the you know the current situation. Yes. Yes. But you must protect the people at, at all times, you know, against injustice. Right. And the, sadly, here what happens is that a lot of people are misled. Right by uh, politicians yes in a, in a multicultural s society you know this is what is so um, uh, sad yes that communal differences race is used as a weapon right, right. And that's what happened in '87. That's what happened in 2000. But uh, 2006, Bani Marama said it was a clean-up. Well, he said that. But a lot of people don't realize that uh, the 2006 coup. It was becoming imminent that that coup would happen. Right. Because there were legislations which. Prime Minister Ngarase was proposing, right. which was very, uh, which was very unpopular, right. with uh, the uh, police, with the judiciary, and with the military. Right. You you talking about the Golingoli bill? Not on Golingoli, the other uh, Ratu bill, the reconciliation bill. Right. And uh, you know, there were three pieces of legislation. Right. And uh, I think. Um, 
the Ratu bill that, that which was uh, of course the reconciliation bill right. that was proposing to release all those people who had you know um, uh, who were behind the 2000 coup right. under the camouflage of reconciliation right right so the police said no look this is nonsense right because these people have committed a crime, we've, we've prosecuted them, and, and, and how can you release them? And it's a travesty of justice. Yes. The judiciary was also um, unhappy with the, with the bill, yeah. because yeah. it had to do, with, to do with the rule of law. Yes. You either govern by the rule of law, <laughs> right. or you don't. Right. So, um, and of course the military was also unhappy. Yes. About that. I was then in the opposition, not in the opposition, but part of the government, right. but I was a backbencher. I hadn't taken any ministerial position. Right. And I tried to persuade Prime Minister Ngarase to hold on. Right. Don't take this, these bills to Parliament. Yes. Because there was a lot of tension right. at that time. And army officers in full uniform would come and listen to the debates in parliament. Right. Right. So the, the signal was there. It was already yeah. there, yes. Yeah. They wanted these bills withdrawn. Yes. They said so. Right. There was a lot of it in the newspapers of the day. Mm. But Mr. Ngarase persisted. Right. And, and then, then eventually this happened. Yes. A lot of people don't know about that probably or haven't uh, thought al along those lines, but uh, that, is, that is what happened. At that time, uh, the parliament was undergoing some, in Bayuto was undergoing some repairs. Right. Because the roof was, uh, uh, found to be structurally weak, so uh, we, were, we, we couldn't sit there. Right. And parliament was moved to the uh, police academy here right. in uh, Nasova. Yes. Mm. And uh, that particular sitting, uh, you had uh, uh, maybe 30 or 40 army officers in full uniform right. sitting there. Sitting mm. there. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll just move to the, the recent cabinet reshuffle that wasn't the reshuffle uh, you Failed know, reshuffle, you, mean. <laughs> <laughs> you had you were quite vocal about that as well uh, could the prime minister maybe have handled the issue a bit better of course you look at what happened right and uh, he announced this reshuffle from right. somewhere outside the country yes <laughs> then uh, the people who were who were going to be moved said they were they weren't told about it. Right. They learned it from the Facebook or something. Right. And, uh, and uh, then the prime minister come. He's got a, a number of versions of this, right? Right. <laughs> then he was asked why didn't he consult. Then he said uh, because uh, the uh, three deputy prime ministers were out. Yes. So out of the country. So he couldn't consult. Right. But in this day and age, you know, they're only a phone call away from you. That's right. Wherever they may be in the world. Right. So it didn't make sense. And uh, of course, um, the last stroke was, of course, that these guys who were, who were to be moved said, no, we're not moving. Right. So uh, the reshuffle <laughs> failed. Right. And the prime minister, of course, looked a fool. Mm. You know? If if you were prime minister, and I wouldn't you have done anything like that. And you, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but for <laughs> for argument's sake, if you had announced the reshuffle and the ministers refused to move, what what would have happened? They would be sacked immediately. Yes, right. because that's insubordination. Right. But reshuffles are done. There's a way of doing it. Right. Right. And uh, that wasn't followed. Right. So uh, I don't know. 
It's a, it's a difficult situation, I understand. Yes. It, that, that, you know, it, it's a, it's a, it's a three-legged stool. Yes. And uh, it's very unsteady. Right. The, pro the problem we have right now, I don't know how many people understand this, is that we have a very unstable government. Right. Very unstable government. We don't have an effective government. You have to accommodate everybody. Right. This reshuffle is, is a typical example, right? A classic example of what sort of uh, instability we have. Right. And uh, this is the reason why uh, we don't have investment coming in at the moment. Right. People are still waiting and watching. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, yes, uh, I think that they're still uh, not sure. Then you have uh, the commander coming in from time to time, right. asking uh, the prime minister to stay within the constitution. Oh, yes. Hmm? Is that this, is, this uh, has happened about three times, I yes. think. Uh, you know, he says he's just fulfilling his role um, as as per their their, their mm. role in the mm. constitution, mm. you know, it's to ensure that things are done correctly. Yes, that's what he says, and yeah. he, of course, he's going through his own minister, line minister. Right. Gets the message across to the prime minister. Right. And uh, but what he's saying is that you stay within the um, constitution. Right. And we must do that. Yes. For the time, uh, 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 not only that. But we must govern within the rule of law. Yes. But that's not happening right now. There are instances mm -hmm. right. where it's not happening. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the problems people are finding is access to justice. Yes. Under this government, of course, it was there all the way <laughs> under the Fiji first, but also it's happening here. Right. And a typical example I'll give you: this, this is how the poor people, people who are not connected, right. Mm -hmm get the run around. And I'm talking about the Ferris wheel case. Right. Even now, the report's not out. Yes. Last week or so, Minister Agni Dev Singh said that the report was uh, gone to the DPP. Right. Well, this is uh, the showcase incident yeah. where yes. yeah, the lady died. Yeah? Yes. The young, uh, young woman died. The father died six weeks later. He went into depression. Um, she. She was his fa favorite daughter. So the father died. The two other ladies were injured. They right. need you know, they're, they're seriously injured. And they need medical attention. Right. Nobody cares about them. Right. And uh, they're, they're trying to access justice. The minister says the report for four long months. Mm -hmm. The minister say, kept saying that the investigations are going on, going on. The police haven't come back yet, and all this. Right. Eventually, even pressure was applied. He says, well, that report is now with the DPP. What is it doing with the DPP? Right. If it's there, all right, fine, let's finalize it. Is somebody going to be charged or yes. not charged? Right. There's a death, man. Yes. <laughs> People, uh, a person has died and the yes. two have seriously injured. Mm -hmm. So people want to access justice and this is what they get. Right. It's, it's, and it's, that's, the, that's the only example. There are other examples where right. poor people wanting to access justice can't get through. Can't get through. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's one thing. The second is um, the issue of uh, uh, administration of justice. Right. We have had cases here now with this government. Right. It was happening all the time with Fiji first. And they're doing the same thing. Right. Appointing people who are not qualified right. to important constitutional positions or to the judiciary. Mm -hmm. And this has the news, new, newspapers have run this story. Yes. And you know what I'm talking about. Yes. Right. right. And they're not correcting this. Mm. They're governing outside the law. Right. A recent case, of course, of the chief, chief registrar. Yes. Who, had, who pleaded guilty to charge of drunken driving. Right. And then he sentenced without a conviction. <laughs> yes. Now, the state could have appealed. Yes. I don't know they didn't appeal, all right. But there is another avenue, and that is to charge him for misbehavior under the, under the Constitution. 
to appoint a tribunal right. to investigate him for misbehavior, like they did with uh, CJ, uh, sorry, former CJ. Former CJ, yeah. yeah. Same procedure. And definitely there is a case of misbehavior here. Yes. But nobody said anything. Right. Even the law society didn't say anything. Right. Yeah. I have written to the CJ, yes. who is the chair on this issue, who is the chair of the uh, Judicial Service Commission, right. saying that uh, he should call a meeting mm -hmm. of the commission and uh, advise the president to appoint a tribunal right. to investigate him for misbehavior. Right. That was about 10 days ago. I haven't had a reply yet. Well, but we, we, we've well, got to speak out on these things. And that's that's right. a question of governing within the uh, no, rule of law. Yes. And if you're not doing this, what, what is the difference between this and government the, and, and the, and the previous government? one? Yeah. Anyway, we'll uh, come back to the show after a short break. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Well, you know, you mentioned uh, retaining people. People need to be paid well to that's be retained. Right, yes. So how, how do we... Well, as I said, in the public service, there's been no pay reviews. Right. Right. Cost of living is going up. Right. There are opportunities outside. Yes. So, and you have not come out with a, with a, uh, your own program. Right. Like, for instance, um, yeah, to, to, to retain people. And uh, so they, they, they don't have a choice. Right. They don't have a choice because things have not been going right in this country for, the, for a long time since uh, the Bani Marama takeover and, right. and even maybe from before. Yes. Right. I myself have spent 35 years after the 87 coup. Right. Right working hard to see if we can get things fixed up. It hasn't happened. Right. right. I've become a grandfather. Right. <laughs> My children grew up in that time and they, they were children now. Yes. All right, they're fortunate that I was able to educate them. They had university degrees and all that. They were able to find jobs or, or professions themselves. So they yes. All right. And, uh, but not everybody has, has that opportunity. Right. right. And I had to do it all by myself, but my children were not educated on any scholarship or anything like that. Yeah. <laughs> right. I didn't take advantage of the state uh, finances, no. But a lot of people they haven't got that kind of patience to keep waiting. Right. Time's going by. You know, 35 years is a long time. Yes. W more than a generation. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. So, the country needs to be making progress for people to say, right, this is the place to be. The economy is growing, the cost of living is okay, housing is pro pro provision is there, medical is good, education is all right. Mm -hmm. And we're a small country, we've got the potential to do all that. Right. It's not that we are, a, we, we are a poor country. No, we are not. We're resource rich. Yes. Yeah. We need a good government. We right. need a government with a vision and with a, with a political will right. to do things. Mm -hmm. So th this is what needs to be done, but now we've come to a, situ to a point where a lot of people have lost confidence. You've got to right, restore that confidence in the people. And, and this, yeah. this, this means you've got to bring everybody together. Right. right. Because we are right now in an SOS situation. Yes. <laughs> right? yeah. Yeah. You're meaning economically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. economically, yes. Yeah. In an SOS situation. And socially as well. Socially, yeah. So, uh, you know, it, from all sides. Yes. Right? And uh, so it means they talked a lot about inclusive government. government. Right. No, it's not inclusive at all here. Mm. Right? 
So uh, I saw the other day where Mr. Narumbe was saying he's he's prepared to help, yes. but he's being ignored. Right. <laughs> right. And I think he could do a lot. Right. In terms of um, improving the economy of this nation. Yes. But if you want to listen to the international financial institutions and uh, go by their prescription, yeah. then the poor will always remain poor. Right. I've been finance minister three times. Yes. I never listened to them. <laughs> when I thought they were wrong, I said so. Right. They were never able to impose anything on me yes. if it was not pro-people. Right. And pro-people means pro-poor. Right. I always didn't take their advice and we managed. Yes. The first thing they'll tell you is devalue your currency. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Suppress wages. Yes. Their uh, prescription for reducing poverty is just throw some money from time to time. Right. Right at them. That's like this $200. Yes. Uh, that demand is doing <laughs> after slamming 15% that. Right. <laughs> you know. Um, no, that's, that's not it. We want them to have jobs. Yes. We don't want them to be begging for state charity. Right. right. We want them to have decent jobs, decent pay. And we have the potential to do all that. So uh, what's, what's a decent pay, an hourly rate? What's, what's if you look at the, the cost of living here, I think that there's got to be some relationship between the cost of living and, and the, the income of the people. Right. right. Biman promised $5 in, in 2018. Right. If you take that figure at that time and index it to inflation, it should be around eight dollars now, <laughs> seven to eight dollars. That should be. That would be a livable. That would be a livable, livable in terms wage. of yeah. yeah. You know, you ask the people that they're arguing so much about inflation. What is the right rate of inflation? Right. Because there are varying figures. Yes. Biman is saying four percent. Right. Reserve Bank is saying six percent. Right. And INZ economist is saying it's 14, 15 percent. Yes. Right. So who do you believe? Mm. You believe the man on the street, ask him, or right. ask the housewife. Right. Right. No, it's, it's way more than 4 percent. Right. Way more than 4 percent. You look at the prices. I yes. think, I think uh, uh, Kisti Sen is right. Probably 14, 15 percent. Around 15 percent. Yeah, yeah, maybe even more. Yeah. You know, come to think it. And, and there are other problems associated with it. For people who want to um, build a house or repair a house and building materials and all this thing. Yes. It's shot up so much that it's very difficult to do that. It's not only food. Yes. It's other items too when you come to, come to think of it. Right. And we are also suffering from uh, a supply problem. Right. A lot of things you, you can't get now. Yes. You have to wait. Yes. It's an order and things like that. So these are pro these are problems which are affecting the economy. Right. Right. They're talking about building uh, three thousand homes. Yes. Have we got the capacity for that? Have <laughs> they thought that out? Huh? Yes. They've just accepted that IFC World Bank housing package. Yes. No, I would never accept it as it is. Yes. Because it is. It's just not going to work. Right. And the poor won't get the houses in the end. Somebody else will get it. Yes. So these are the things that they, that they need expertise in. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, they don't have it. They, right. they just believe the, uh, these inst international institutions. Yes. Whose job it is to sell. <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> Their policies. Right. Well, yes. By, that's why I said that people like Mr. Narumbe would be right. an asset to this government if they Take, if, uh, mm. they take him in, yeah. or give him some important position. Right. And I just want to bring you back to the sugar industry, only because there's a lot of money invested yes. uh, in it. You mm -hmm. know, government puts up so much every year. Yes. So, is it viable to continue flogging a dead horse, so to speak? Well, on its present trajectory now, right. it has to be transformed. Right. Right. We've got to evaluate to it. We've got to diversify uh, the farms. Right. They'll be producing so much sugar cane, so much other crops and all that. And uh, yes, so a lot of changes have to be brought about. 
in terms of value adding, in terms of diversification. Right. Only then it'd make it viable. Right. But otherwise it'll keep sucking money from the government. Yes. Yeah. And the other thing is also that um, our young people are not very keen on agriculture, right. particularly sugar cane. Yes. Yeah. Well, the, uh, the payment system itself. The payment system itself know. is a disincentive. Yes. And uh, then land problems mm. also, because every 30 years you've got to renew the, renew leases. the leases here. And then uh, lease renewals are expensive. And right. uh, so we've got to modernize our agriculture. Right. If we want to produce sugar, we've got to decide right, how much of it we're going to produce efficiently. Right. right and byproducts of that, what are we going to do with that? Right. How are we going to value add to it? It's not point talking about ma making ethanol out of sugar cane when you don't have sugar cane. Right right. right, right. This year, the production is right down. Even Lambasa Mill has not been able to. It's done uh, by uh, 75,000 tons. They've short, yeah. Short, yes. yeah. And other mills will be in, in the similar sort of situation. Right. Lambasa is by far the better producer yes. compared to the other districts. Mm. And if they fail right. to reach their target, others will also. So it's going to be a low production year. Well, right. So, you, you know, uh, when you talk about low production, Lambasa is affected. All the towns that depend on the sugar money, uh, Rakiraki, Tavua, mm -hmm. uh, not so much Ba. But, you know, so. Uh, it's uh, again a question of juggling. Do we invest more in this industry or look for something new? If you want to invest, then it's, go it's got to be on a different mo in a different model. Right. right. Not, the, not, the, saying, not yeah. the existing. Not the existing. Yeah. Yes. Because it's a very archaic thing, and you look at the um, um, our transportation system. Yes. Hmm? Very ancient. It hasn't changed in those days. It's very expensive. Right. Lorries, cutting cocaine by lorries. Our railway infra infrastructure, it's almost gone. It wasn't maintained right. and all that. So it's, it's a completely new game that you have to uh, play in, in this area in terms of uh, planning. I think these mills are pretty ancient. Yes. We need more modern mills right? and all that, but there are other there are other problems which we need to first of all sort out. Right. If you're thinking long term, yes. only then you must. D uh, if all those things are sorted out, then you must. Right. Uh, you can invest in in this industry. Right. Otherwise, it will be as you say. Yeah. You know, well, uh, more money down. Down the tube. Down yeah. the tube. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I want to uh, ask you because you know every time there's a campaign before election, people always bring up the Haryana issue, mm. you know, the money that, uh, you know, th that was given and all that. So what actually happened there? Well, the court said, uh, this went to the court. Yes. And the court uh, itself looked at it. Yes. And they said that money was uh, given to me. Right. By the people there. Yes. Because of what happened to me in Fiji when I come from Haryana, this was an emotional thing for right. them. And it came through the uh, Indian High Commission in, in Sydney. Right. So there you are. Yes. A tax has been paid on that. Yes. And uh, my detractors were trying to say that that money belonged to the, well, was for the cane farmers. Right. Yes. That is not so, because had it been so, the courts would have said so. Right. Right. So it went through the court system. Yes. The High Court looked at it, and right. if I had done something wrong, certainly. Yes. I wouldn't have been spared. Right. Right. So, you know, you 81 now. Mm -hmm. uh, still looking very fit. Do you still have uh, enough in you for maybe in four years' time to <laughs> fight the election? <laughs> well, that only God knows. Right. But for that moment, I'm fit. And right. I think I'm fitter than most of the politicians who are there <laughs> <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Physically, uh, no, it's by his grace. Uh, yes. I've got no serious illnesses, no nothing, and i um, looking after myself. Yes. And uh, my good wife takes care of me, so, right. so um, yeah, we're doing fine. Right. And uh, 
But, we, but the thing is that uh, we must get this country right. Yes. And honestly, if we go on in this circle, it, no. First thing is we need to change this constitution. Right. But that's easily said and done. More I've been saying this for, for yes. right from the beginning. It was an imposed constitution. Right. It was not put through parliament. There was no consultation with the people, no. So I think that, that in itself. Right. Yeah. Is enough. Right, right. To throw this constitution out. Yes. And this constitution has been uh, heavily criticized by a working group of the UN Human Rights Council. Right. It's not democratic. Right. It does not provide for uh, uh, what you call it is uh, 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 it's not occurring to me now. Uh, do, do, do you also agree with uh, the voting system, the, the, the horn system that we use? No, I don't. Yeah. No. See, it doesn't provide for separation of powers between mm. the parliament, executive, judiciary and parliament. Right. There's so much wrong in this constitution, including the electoral system. Right. right. And uh, the powers are in the hands of the executive. Right. So, uh, uh, because if your basic law is not right, yes. you can't get the country right. right. A lot of problems we face today is because of this constitution. Right. right. But, but it doesn't hold the government accountable. Yes. Uh, uh, many have said on social media and uh, various platforms that Labour Party didn't manage to even win one seat. So what went wrong and what, what are you going to change for the next election? Well, I think our manifesto is the best. Right. If you compare. Yes. Right. And, mm. and uh, it goes back to even Dr. Mara's time, he praised our manifesto, that they have the best manifesto, he said. Right. Right. And that's why 99 yes. was such a good year for us. Right. But they didn't let us run. Right. We're paying the price for it today. Yes. And uh, if we go on the same beaten track like we've done, this country will not improve. Right. There are too many vested interests, each pulling in their own direction. Right. You see, the, the problem is that these vested interests, they want everything for themselves. They're not looking at the country yes. as a whole. No. Right. They're not. They're looking at their self-interest. Right. Yeah. Right. But how, how, how do you think you can get the Labour Party to appeal to the masses? Because you haven't been successful, you know. Well, over the basically, I was, I was disqualified, right, right, for the first uh, eight years of 2014. And we've also said that we, we haven't had a fair election in this country. Right. Right. Hmm. From 2014, 2018, 2022. Right. Glitches. Yes. Now, this glitch was supposed to have been investigated. Right. Right. 22 glitch. Yes. The supervisor of elections did that and they came up with uh, the explanation that it was a human error. Right. But that was supposed to be further verified yes. whether the human error was uh, uh, deliberate. Right. Right. Or accidental. Right. right. Mm -hmm. But every time a glitch occurred, the whole result changed. Yes. Up until glitch, we were doing very well. We we're in the third place. Right. Right, Labour. Right. Yeah. And then suddenly, we're out. Right. Now, this government promised to investigate that. Yes. But it's not happening. Right. They've stopped that. Why? I don't know. Right. And I think if it is if investigated, the result may be quite different. Right. Maybe Labour got in. Yeah, maybe maybe we, we made the threshold. Yes. Right? Not the government, but the threshold. Right. Suddenly. So, until that time, no? Uh, it is. But let me tell you that the proof of the pudding is in eating it, right? Right. 
So you compare, we had one short year, you compare that and you compare the subsequent government that have come in yes. and look at where they put the country. Right. Yeah. So um, this, this thing will continue like this. Right. Until, until, until we make that change. Until we make that change. You've got to get this constitution right. Yes. And people who argue that uh, this constitution cannot be removed and we need 75%, I don't agree with that. Right. I think it was forced on us. Right. We can throw it out like that. Right. Right. And there was uh, a process which was done by Bani Marama to review the constitution. Right. And the Asgai constitution right. came in, draft constitution. Right. And then he trashed it. Yes. That consti draft constitution was supposed to go through a constitu constituent assembly and all that. Yes. Which, of course, he um, he just scrapped all that. Right. So he just imposed it on us. Yes. Him and Kayu. Right. Okay. So uh, that, that's my that's my answer to this. I don't right. think we should get involved in the l all all these long l legal wrangles and all that kind of thing. Right. It was done undemocratically. Right. So it has no legitimacy. Right. Okay. Thank you. It was, it was a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you. Uh, uh, you know, I hope we might see you again soon, uh, maybe under different circumstances. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Thank well, you very much. Thank you. All the best, yes. Thank you. And with compliments for the festive season, it's not very far off. Yes, <laughs> likewise. Thank you, and uh, that brings us to the end of The Lens at 177. Please do visit our website, www.fijitimes.com and all social media platforms to watch this show and other interesting news like it. Love.